what is Percocet like? Percocet Oxycontin, same medication, same drug. It is a med. It was a pain relieving med that was designed to help people through recovery of any kind of major surgeries. Highly addictive drug. What is taking Percocet like? Now, this isn't to glorify any kind of drug use. My name is Eric. I'm a recovering alcoholic, cocaine addict. This was not one of my drugs of choice. I share on everything that I've ever experienced just so that nobody feels alone. If you're struggling with addiction, links are down below. So this is what using Oxycontin Percocet was like. If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. My experience with Percocets, I never got addicted to Percocets. Percocet was not, opiates were never my drug of choice. Percocet Oxycontin though was very different than Hydrocodone or Norco's. Both are opiates. But again, everything affects our system differently. I was prescribed actually Oxycontins for a surgery that I ended up having done. And I ended up taking this med just for as a pain relieving med. I never went through any withdrawals from it because I never really got hooked on it. It also wasn't a drug that I truly enjoyed. Now I'm not a counselor, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm none of that. I lost a wife and a father to suicide. I attempted suicide. I'm a recovering cocaine and alcoholic addict. I know what addiction's like because I've been down that road before. I'm diagnosed with ADHD, PTSD, GAD, MDD, level one autism. So I've been through the gambit. I have taken Oxycontins, which is the same as Percocet. It's an off-brand of Percocet. So Percs and Oxy, same thing. Affects your system the same way too. When I took this, it never gave me an uplifting, energized feeling. It put me down a level. It, is, it was a big downer on my whole system. So if I, even in pain, when I took this drug, it took me from up here to right down here very, very quickly. It hit my system, I would say, within about 10 to 15 minutes max. When this hit my system, it was almost like I could feel my shoulders drop. I mean, don't get me wrong, everything felt good. The pain went away, but I wasn't energized. When I took Norco or Hydrocodone, it was a very opposite effect. I felt like there was wings inside my chest and on my lungs, and my heart fluttered every time it was beating. Where with Oxys... I felt just down. I just, I felt good, but I felt down really lethargic. Any kind of movement I did was just kind of cool. It was very, very easy for me to sleep. You know, I would take this and just be out of it. It was almost like taking like a Xanax or a Benzos to my system. Now, this is where medications all affect us all differently. How it metabolizes in our system is all different. And that's why a lot of it's trial and error with drugs. I mean, this is a drug that's highly addictive. I know a lot of people don't take it or are very afraid to take it because of those addictive qualities. But my skin just felt so much smoother, so much nicer. Everything was just great. It does put you in a very good mood because you don't feel any pain. It's almost like a numbness feeling of just life and pain. So you just sit there and you're just, I don't know how to explain it other than just kind of being out of it. Felt like there's a blanket over my heart. Felt then like there's a blanket over me. And I would just kind of zone out. It, my eyelids became really heavy. I would just sit there and I could just watch TV. I didn't really want to move. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to just do anything. I wanted to sit there. Any any sudden movements, my motor skills were really slowed down. I couldn't couldn't react very quick. And it's what also threw me off because when I took Norco, I mean, hydrocodone, it amped me up almost. It, it gave me a lot of energy. When I took Red Kratom on my experiment, it gave me a lot of energy. Oxycontin uh, just did not. It really just brought me down to a level that I just felt like, hey man, everything's okay. It was almost like an acid trip because it brought me down such a level of not wanting to do anything, just lethargic. It was almost like white kratom in a sense where I can actually relate it to these because those were very recent um, deals that I did when I experimented with the kratoms where it was just lethargic. I felt good, but just didn't want to move. Easy for me to sleep, easy for me to oversleep. Uh, was uh, just no no appetite there are side effects of taking this i mean if you get dizzy you, you can get vomiting um, your skin can get irritated and change colors so there are a lot of side effects too uh, when it comes to taking oxycontin uh, percocets but the big one is is addictive wise because it does hit your brain sensory i don't won't go into the science of it, but your brain actually has sensors that bond when it comes to opiates so withdrawal can be very difficult i mean I never got addicted to this because I didn't abuse it in that sense when it came to taking the pills. I took them as needed on, on the prescription. It wasn't an exciting high though, so it didn't make me yearn for it. It didn't draw me to it. And that's the thing with an addict. A lot of times everyone thinks that an addict is addicted to everything. That's not the case, man. We have a drug of choice. Mine were stimulants. Mine were, were cocaine. It wasn't even meth or any of the other drugs out there. My, my addiction drew towards cocaine. It drew towards alcohol. 
when it came to this, I just, I, it wasn't something that just excited me that I needed to get more of. Uh, whenever I got high, I wanted to be energetic. I wanted to feel like I could take on the world. I wanted to be just stimulated by life. Where this removed all the stimulation from life, it removed all the joy almost kind of from life because just everything was good. There was no emotions. It was very, very emotionless drug when I took it. It was, it was just, ugh. I mean, and I use these sounds and words because if you've taken drugs before, you understand this ugh, feeling. Where with some people, don't get me wrong, opiates do amp you up. This just, it brought me down to this just parallel level where just everything was all right. Everything was good. I didn't care about anything. Just tired. My, my, my eyes were heavy. Just trying to lift my arm was just too much effort. Just kind of wanted to sleep. Don't want to eat. Had dry mouth. Just kind of sit in there, man, being, being me. Hey, what up? <laughs> And it, because of that feeling was a feeling that I actually truly hated. That's why this was a drug that never really drew me to it. Uh, when it comes to the addiction side of it, I understand. I mean, addiction from these drugs is very difficult. I mean, if you do get addicted to these, you've got to get with your doctor. Let them know. You take these drugs as prescribed because it comes into that abuse factor of when we really can tell that we're an addict uh, or when we're truly getting addicted to something. I mean, the simple signs of uh, withdrawal when it comes to opiates is restless legs, hot and cold flashes, feels like you got the flu times a thousand, body aches, you can't sleep. You're, you're constipated, you just, your, your body feels like it's collapsing on itself. So the withdrawals from these are very, very difficult. That's why they have like Suboxone out there. They have different clinics out there to help you kind of taper off of this. My suggestion is you, you get with a doctor when it comes to addiction on this. Don't go the red kratom route because that's something that can lead you right back to relapse. But it just, it made my whole system feel like it was shutting down, just calm no pain. I mean, the, the, it, it did its job. I never felt any pain from, from my recovery. When, when my body started to hurt and I needed to take it, the pain was gone 10, 15 minutes in, boom, done. It didn't draw me towards it where I wanted to take more, wanted to take more. It was only removing the pain and it wasn't giving me any energy. So I just, I didn't care. I had to remember to sit and drink water. And I just remember sitting in front of the TV. It was a wasted week I felt in my life. So I didn't get addicted to this drug. I have taken the drug before. Just wasn't, Norco's drew me more to it. I mean, on the, the gambit of opiates, if I was to say what was my opiate of choice, if I was to get addicted or see myself getting addicted to something, it would have been Norco hydrocodone because that, instead of just making me feel bland and blah, that made me feel like my heart was, was fluttering. My heart was, was on wings. My, my lungs tickled with a good tickle inside. I had energy, no pain could walk and go, just a great feeling inside. And that did scare me a little bit when it came to the hydrocodone. But again, it was never something that I took uh, uh, consecutively to the point that I went through any kind of withdrawals from it. But it is one of those things that when I do talk about it, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to take that drug anymore because I know my, my pattern, my behavior. I've been sober since 725, 17, and I don't want to relapse in any way, shape or form. I don't smoke weed or anything of that sort. Because I am afraid of that relapse, I did go through withdrawals when it came to red kratom. And those withdrawals were enough to go, you know what, this is not the route that I'm going to go. This is not a drug of choice. This is not something to abuse. And again, it comes down to that. It's not something to abuse. And if you are abusing it and you are struggling with it, a lot of times we don't even know what to do. Man, tell everybody you're an addict. They already know. You think you're lying to them. They already know you're an addict. That show you're putting on, the manipulation, the stealing of the money, the, you know, I need money because I can't eat type bull. I mean, your family knows, man. Your friends know, and they may be enabling you some, but ask for help. Just tell everybody, dude, this, I'm addicted. I am addicted, and I need help. And that's where that ball starts rolling. I got links down below to AA and NA. I ended up getting sober through AA. I've been to NA meetings before, and at least getting into the environment, the culture, uh, of being around sober people, realizing that there's a sober life out there that's not drug related. It's not getting high every single day. I mean, it is a great life getting sober. I do see how people can get addicted to these. It is a very addictive, good feeling. Uh, oxycodone, uh, Percocets weren't my feeling. It wasn't my internal feeling that I enjoyed, but Norco's were. If I took a drug that made me feel inside invincible, it gave me energy, it made me feel good when I breathed, it made me smile instantly, that was a danger. If I took a drug and I smiled, I got an issue. That's going to become a drug of choice. That's going to be something I'm drawn to. So if you are out there, though, tell everybody that you're struggling. Ask for help. 
and get with the right people. Sometimes it's rehab, sometimes it's NA, sometimes it's tapering. It's different for everybody. And that's why I share these experiences. Even if it wasn't my drug of choice, I share these experiences because it helps us feel less alone. And sometimes you hear something and we go, dude, I understand that. I know that feeling. Like when people talk to me about Coke and they're like, you know, it almost tastes like a chlorine feeling and your gums, to, you know, you can feel your gums and your teeth just feel hardened and your jaw locks up. Like, I get it, man. I've been there. I know what that feeling's like. When it comes to, to these, man, I just, I felt like I had a blanket over me, man. It started with a blanket over my heart and started with a blanket then over the rest of my body and everything just kind of went numb. The world went silent for a little while and that was a big struggle with it, but it wasn't an exciting struggle. So it was a drug that I never abused. If I had to take it again, if I was prescribed it, I probably would because I know how I reacted with it. It wasn't a drug that scared me, but if you are out there struggling with it, I know so many people that have reach out for help because you matter. And that's what it's about. I'd love to hear your comments. Comment down below. I'd love to know just what you're going through, what you're struggling with, because that's what it's about is a community of, you know, people helping people, knowing that you're not alone, knowing that you're not the only one trying to get sober every single day, not the only one fighting this battle because you aren't. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's do this together.